Hey guys, today we're going to learn about the hypothalamus using this picture mnemonic. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out basically all of the physiological mechanisms of the hypothalamus and what structures are responsible for that. Now, I have a cow. Um, this mnemonic is already online to some extent. I've, I've sort of beefed it up a little bit, um, pun intended, um, so that it's, uh, it's a little more uh, functional for us. Um, so what is the hypothalamus? The hypothalamus is obviously a stru structure below the thalamus. That's why it's called hypothalamus. And its, it's, stru it's uh, structure sort of suggests its function where being below the thalamus it, and above the pituitary, it is able to essentially connect those two organs and integrate those organs. Um, so a lot of the functions we're going to be talking about um, can kind of be kept in um keeping that can be understood better by keeping that in mind. Now, even though I have this a cow, the hypothalamus is no cow sized organ. It is a more of an almond size. Um, and one more thing before we get going, um, even though we're going to be talking about the hypothalamus as distinct nuclei with distinct functions, a lot of these functions are actually shared between the many nuclei in the hypothalamus. So for example, one way to look at the anatomy would be like this picture on the left, uh, whereas in reality, with this digital image um, done on actual an actual hypothalamus, you see that the uh, structures are a little less straightforward than what is assumed in uh, such a depiction as this. Um, so we're going to be talking about more of a physiological approach where this is kind of more how we think about it, where a given nuclei has a given function rather than the whole hypothalamus um, in some cases for a given function is involved. Uh, let's get going now on some of these mnemonics. So um, one of the nuclei is the suprachiasmatic um, nuclei and obviously that's going to be the nuclei above the optic chiasm. So here's the optic chiasm here and here's the suprachiasmatic uh, nuclei. Um, what's the function of that? Well, it is a regulation of circadian rhythms. And how we can remember that using this picture? Well, I have these sort of clouds above the cow, and they look like sheep. So you can remember that um, counting sheep reminds you of sleep, and that can remind you of the circadian rhythms, um, because sleep is one of the most cited um, circadian rhythm um, processes in the body. So think of this spot, this X on his head, on her head, and then think of the, the clouds that look like sheep above, and that reminds you of sleep cycles and other circadian cycles. All right, another nuclei is R, the um, anterior hypothalamic, hypothalamic nuclei, and that's going to be represented by the anterior of the cow being the nose, and that also suggests the function of this nuclei is for cooling or um, thermal re regulation and specifically cooling um, where um, this nuclei can be attributed to um, mechanisms such as panting or sweating and it also blocks thyrotropin release or TSH release and um, similarly a cow's nose is a mechanism you know a wet nose keeping it cool in this hot summer day um, so just as a note, remember t um, TSH is a one of the primary regulators of the basal metabolic rate, and so you would suggest you would guess that that's um, definitely going to be involved in thermal regulation. So anterior nuclei cooling, right? and then just for symmetry, let's go to the posterior of the cow, and this is the posterior nuclei, and the posterior nuclei is involved in uh, heating. And I have here a, excuse my vulgarity, but a hot fart coming out of the back of the cow. And that uh, reminds us of heating involved in, with the posterior nuclei. And specifically, heating by how? Well, um, they're shivering um, and well, I'm basically shivering. Um, one other thing to remember is that it's also, if you're really looking for details, it's also involved in pupillary dilation and increasing blood pressure via ADH. Um, so maybe a fart and maybe somehow you can remember 
a pupillary dilation with this fart. I'm not going to say it because uh, <laughs> it's kind of... Anyway, um, so what else do we have? We have the paraventricular nuclei um, and the supraoptic nuclei. Now I'm going to mention these together because they're fairly similar. So above the eyes of the cow, we have this um, little tag. So those are representing the supraoptic nuclei. And then we have these pair of V-shaped ears to remind us of the paraventricular uh, nuclei. <clears throat> and you can maybe just picture the cow's head as the um, ventricle, I guess, if you want to remember that also. But the pair of V-shaped ears are the, representing the um, paraventricular nuclei. Now, back to the superoptic nuclei, that is involved in ADH and uh, oxytocin release. Um, so here I have this tag on here and it says, I don't know if you can read it, but it says AD for American Dairy. That can remind you of ADH. And then I also have the ears listening for this ox over here to remind us of oxytocin release. And the paraventricular and um, supraoptic nuclei are both involved in this function, um, the release of ADH and um, oxytocin. And remember, those are the two hormones that are stored in the posterior pituitary uh, for a release. Um, so remember that the posterior pituitary is not actually a um, hormone secreting gland. And that's because these nuclei, the supraoptic and the paraventricular nuclei, synthesize those hormones um, that are associated with that um, pituitary site. And now, one more thing is the paraventricular nuclei also release some more hormones. Um, so I'm going to say the paraventricular nuclei vent the releasing hormones. They vent the releasing hormones and it, it is the paraventricular nuclei that does this. So what are those releasing hormones? Well, um, there's the um, cortisol releasing hormone and the um, um, thyrotropin uh, releasing hormone or the TSH releasing hormone. And then it's, there's also somatostatin. So the paraventricular nuclei very um, involved in releasing hormones in the pituitary or the hypo sorry the hypothalamus region. So um, just as an overview, again, the supraoptic nuclei and the paraventricular nuclei both involved in ADH and oxytocin. That's to say the posterior um, pituitary hormones and the paraventricular nuclei also involved in releasing the hormones, the releasing hormones. So the cortisol releasing hormones and the um, TSH uh, re releasing hormone or the thyrotropin releasing hormone is another name. So that's to say they, it's for venting, it's the paraventricular nuclei for venting these hormones. That's a, a mnemonic for that. Um, next, we have the tuberomammillary nuclei. And so I have this um, mammillary, mammillary gland reminding us of that, the tuberomammillary nuclei. So this, this gland has nothing to do with lactation. That's actually the arcuate nuclei, which we can talk about next. Um, but the um, tuberomammillary nuclei is involved in mem uh, memory, memory, memory right? Memorary, mammillary memory. So those are um, associated. And one other thing is the, the tuberomammillary nuclei are histaminergic. Um, so I put a B on this udder as the last measure. Um, you can see here to remind us of a, a, a histamine inducing B reminds us of the histaminergic um, tuberomammillary uh, nuclei. And this can also remind you that uh, some of the functions of this um, nuclei, is not just memory, but also um, al alertness. And um, you can remember this because um, remember first generation antihistamines has, have as a serious side effect um, causing um, disorientation, confusion, um, being sleepy, being um, sort of out of it. Um, or unalert, and so that can remind you that this histaminergic nuclei 
is involved in um, doing the opposite of that side effect that is keeping you alert and keeping you um, attentive and um, keeping you from getting confused and so on. Um, similarly, the mammillary nuclei, so not the tuberomammillary nuclei, is involved in the um, functions of memory. Um, so the, this basic um, part of the calc rem reminds you of both of those um, sets of nuclei, the tuberomammillary uh, nuclei and the mammillary nuclei for memory. And then there's the arcuate nuclei, um, which is involved in dopamine release. Um, and that dopamine is headed for the um, pituitary, where it's going to block the release of prolactin. So remember, another name for dopamine is actually prolactin inhibitory factor. So that's a good reminder that it's going to block the release of prolactin. And so um, a lesion, let's say, of the arcuate nuclei would give what effect, would you guess? Well, if the arcuate nuclei is not releasing dopamine or prolactin inhibitory factor, then you'd think that prolactin would be in excess and therefore the person would have galactorrhea, right? So too much lactation. Um, so again, just the arc above the udder reminds you of the lactation um, inhibitory function of the hypothalamus. Uh, next we have the ventromedial nuclei. So here on the belly or the, vent the ventral portion of, of the cow and the medial um, part, we have this F-shaped spot to remind us of being full. And that's because the ventromedial nuclei is involved in satiety. And do you remember what hormone is principally um, attributed to satiety in physiology? It is leptin, that's right. So leptin um, is the, um, the hormone causing satiety, and where is that? In the ventromedial nuclei. Um, and then we also have, oh, I have a mnemonic for that, by the way. Um, lep leptin reminds you of this satiated leprechaun. So maybe he just put down his peanuts at the bar and his beer. He's satiated and he's ready to fight. And he's also kind of got this little belly. It can remind you how satiated he is. He's not thinking about food. He's thinking about fighting because he's satiated. The satiated leprechaun leptin. All right. So next we have the lateral nuclei. And um, let me just say that this nuclei is very busy nuclei. Um, that's why I made it into a big spot. Um, one of the major functions that people mention is hunger um, and also um, satiety. So it has a kind of a mixed function between this um, ventromedial nuclei, um, where the lateral nuclei is controlling both hunger and satiety. Um, so I gave this an H shape also to remind us of the hunger function. Um, so H for hungry and F for full. Um, what are some of these other functions I'm talking about? Well, um, there's a lot of them. Um, there's pain, there's temperature regulation, there's digestive functions, there's arousal. Um, so uh, the, the lateral nuclei has been involved in, or shown to be involved in narcolepsy. So you'd think that'd be more of a um, tuberomammillary nuclei function because remember this was involved in alertness um, and memory right and um, but this is also so this is going back to what I was saying where a lot of these nuclei are actually sharing some of these functions um, and it's also involved in in um, inflammatory bowel disorder um, so there's also digestive function here and this location might remind you of that also now, um, to remind you of the involvement in narcolepsy, this is like almost like two handles where a person who's doing some cow tipping would push and this cow would fall over like a narcoleptic. Um, so let the cow tipping remind you of the lateral nuclei being associated with narcolepsy in some um, pathological patients. And that can also obviously remind you of its function in arousal 
and maybe some of its myriad other functions that we've discussed. We have also the dorsal medial nuclei. So this communicates with nearly all the nuclei in the hypothalamus. Um, so arguably has, um, is involved in all, um, all of the functions of the, the um, hypothalamus. One of its um, major functions also is a sympathetic outflow to the adrenals. And so just picture this little spot on the dorsal medial portion of the cow excuse me, <clears throat> remind you of an adrenal. So this little sort of <clears throat> adrenal shaped spot remind you of the sympathetic outflow um, towards the adrenals. And so what you can say is the dorsal medial nucleus is also involved in not only the other hypothalamic functions as it's integrated with them, but also in increasing blood pressure and heart rate. Um, because remember, that's what adrenaline released from the hypothalamus, from the sorry, the pituitary or adrenal gland will do. So many glands here. Um, so this small sort of adrenal shaped spot reminding you of the sympathetic outflow and the um, adrenal function. Um, we have, I think, yeah, we have one more nuclei and that's the preoptic nuclei. So preoptic is sort of before the eyes of this cow. Before the eyes of this cow, we see this bull right? And that's going to remind us of gonadotropin releasing hormone being released from the preoptic or synthesized from the preoptic nuclei and released. So remember gonadotropin releasing hormone was responsible for the release of FSH and LH. And those um, sort of are part of the, um, the hormone, sexual hormonal axis. And so maybe this lust in her eyes for this bull can remind you that the preoptic nuclei starts this sexual hormone cascade via gonadotropin releasing hormone. All right, I think that's it. Um, one more thing, let me just actually, no, I think that's it. Thanks guys for watching and have a good day. Like the video if it helped. Cheers, guys.